Okay, so uh, welcome here. Today I will try to make sense of uh, the type system. My name is Stefan Gustafsson. Uh, I work as a developer on a company named DICE in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, we make computer games such as um, Star Wars Battlefront and, and Battlefield. It's AAA games, so it's a lot of reading and writing, C++, C Sharp, Python, and uh, quite a lot of PowerShell too, to drive aut automation uh, in our workflows. On my spare time, I try to contribute to PowerShell on GitHub. I think it's so great that they have open sourced it. And I've learned so much from just reading through the code and, and trying to fix things. It's an excellent way of learning. So we're going to have a short overview of like, what is a type system. Why do, do we have it? Don't worry, it won't be long. Then we, we will look at the adapted type system and the extended type system and the role that PS object have in this. We will look at add member and how you can use that to manipulate object instances. And we will look at type data. PowerShell keeps a register of type data in the execution context. Anybody seen the variable execution context, the global variable? Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> so, the, or it's kind of a, almost it's, it's actually a, the execution context, the real one, has a property named engine intrinsics, which is exposed as the global var variable dollar, dollar execution context. And that's just a sly move to confuse the enemy and to help us from fiddling with internals that we shouldn't fill with. Uh, we will also look at update type data, uh, which is how we can manipulate and change and add to this type registry. And finally, we will have a quite quick look at how we can create custom type converters and custom type adapters. So, traditionally, a type system in programming languages has been used to prevent programmers from doing stupid things. Uh, to make sure that you don't use one kind of value in an operation uh, that don't expect that type of value. And the, the thing is, a lot of, like C++ that I program in, in my day job, it trusts the programmer. So, so if I say, this is okay, it trusts me. And that is a really stupid thing. You should never trust a programmer. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> so uh, the, the type system assigns a type to each value in the system. And something that PowerShell quite uniquely, I think, have used this for, is not only to be able to like, stop us from doing stupid things, but to help us to get from, okay, I see you have this type here, and you want to make it this type. Okay, I know how to convert it. So PowerShell actually uses the type system to help us do things, not only to stop us from doing stupid things. And, and this is the source of like, the feeling of superpowers when you're, front, when you're in front of the prompt that, that I haven't experienced in any other environment. It's really, really cool. Uh, and PowerShell builds this type system on top of the .NET static type system and adds its own abstractions, a dynamic type system, meaning like the, how many knows the difference between a static and a dynamic type system? Okay, Bruce and Jeffrey and Dongbo, okay. So, so uh, in a static uh, type system, uh, the program knows up front, before you start running it, what kind of type everything has. In a dynamic type system, you, you determine what to do when you run the stuff. So you get less guarantees, but you can fiddle with the stuff much easier. So it's like, uh, you win some in, uh, what do you say in English? 
Yeah, you win some, you lose some. That, that's maybe the, the expression. Uh, having a dynamic type system in a shell is a necessity. Because there are so many things you need to glue stuff together that maybe wasn't intended to work together. They weren't designed to work together. But having a dynamic type system on top of that, we can add stuff to make it work. Okay? And in PowerShell's case, it actually surfaces several underlying type systems with quite large differences between them into a common type system where we can use everything in a very uniform way, which is also one of the pieces that makes PowerShell so easy to use regardless of the underlying differences in the object model. Most of you, like, it's so transparent, so you, you won't even notice it. Yeah, I, I mentioned this, that, that we actually get help with the, the conversions in PowerShell. So, ATS, the adapted type system. This is what brings uh, SIM, previously WMI and ADSI, which are uh, not available in PowerShell, core, that we shouldn't say any longer. Uh, XML, we have a couple of, of different, to become first-class citizens in PowerShell. Okay? This is done by a series of adapters. So an adapter is responsible for projecting an underlying type system into the PowerShell type system. So make it look as something that we uh, know how to use. These are the different adapters we have, and the meaning of this .NET base class is that if the object that you throw at PowerShell is of this type, if it is a SIM instance, use the SIM instance adapter. If it is an XML node, use the XML node adapter. So when you ask a PS object to do something, it checks, okay, what kind of adapter should I use? And then delegates to that adapter to perform what it needs to do. There are a couple of special adapters, or all of them are kind of special, but the PS object adapter is being used when you don't have a base object. When you don't, like, and this is the case when you have a PS custom object. That's like a pure PowerShell object. It doesn't have any uh, thing that needs to be adapted. And that's handled by the PS object adapter. And you also have this PS member set adapter that we will look into. But remember that there is a PS member set adapter. We, we will look at it in the demos. And at the bottom of all this, you have the .NET adapter, which is like the, the base. It's, it's everywhere. So if you don't find an operation in, in the adapted view, you delegate back to the base, to the .NET object adapter. I don't expect you to understand this after having heard this. So don't, don't be scared if you think, oh, whoa, 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 what is this? We will look into it. So on top of this, we add the glue. And when I say the glue, that is like the dynamic parts of PowerShell where we can add and change and mold the objects uh, to our liking. And that is what, what's been, been given the name, the extended type system. And PS object, you can think of like, my, my mental model of this is like, that's the dispatcher. That's where you go to then see what you should do with this. When you type something, you have an object and you type a dot and a property name. It goes to PS object and it determines what to do. So it's like the the central bookkeeper and, and the, the main go-to point. So it contains a base object, which is the object that we are either adapting or if it's just a PS custom object, uh, PS, uh, base object is null. We don't have it. Then we use the PS object adapter, right? Should I turn that off? Uh, it also collects, uh, it has collections of metadata about like what properties and what members do I have. Uh, it has a list of type names 
And that list of type names is, is very important when we update the type data register because it, it is driven by type names. So we can hook into that functionality by assigning type names to our objects. And we will look at this too in the demonstrations. And finally, we have the adapter that is suitable. You remember the previous list. So these are, if you read the source, you will, you will find more members, but these are like uh, the essential view of uh, what PS object is. The member sets that are exposed by PS objects. It's like every metadata in the collections that I talked about before is represented by a class called PS member info. And the member sets are, are a special case of that. That is a collection of other member infos. So it's a bit meta, and we will look at that. The first of them, PS object, allows us to look at this abstraction. It's really useful in sometimes when you, when you want to add and change stuff, and when you, for example, want in strict mode to check if a property exists on an object. Then you can take the variable you have, type PS object, dot properties, and see if you get the collection of available properties. So that's uh, an easy way to reflect on them. PS base is the view of the base object before the adapter has done its work. PS adapted is the members, like the, the members, I mean the methods and the properties the object has. And PS adapted is the member set that contains the properties and members that you see after the type adapter has done its work. And then we have PS extended. And as you can guess, this is the glue. What has been added after the adapter to make sure that this object works in our environment the way we want it to fit into other objects. And when you add stuff to the type system, this is uh, where it shows up. And the final thing that PS object has is PS standard members. It's a set of properties that we can use to control, uh, oh, I've written default display behavior. Uh, default display property and display property sets controls that, but the default key property sets actually controls, uh, if you pipe something to sort or group, what properties will it use if you don't specify anything? And, uh, and th th this is something that every PS object has. <coughs> so, let's see if we can... Okay, does this work? should start the right thing here. So, we're, we're going to start looking at a SIM instance. Uh, I've randomly picked one, but SIM instances are interesting because they have a quite extensive adaptation. Okay? So, when I run this, you get the, the normal PowerShell output, uh, and now we're going to look at the PS object root of the object model abstraction. And it shows me what members and what properties and what methods, it's, what type, type names are there. Think a little bit about now what adapter was being used when I typed $c.ps object. PS object is a member set, right? And member set had a special adapter. So they can control by using this adapter what will happen when we go through the PS object route and not handle it as a standard .NET object. 
or as a SIM object. So this is an extension point that they, they have used to make it easier for us to peek into the system in a quite interesting way. So SIM ba uh, PS base, this is before the type adapter has done its work. And you can see we, we only have three properties, class, instance properties, and system properties. We can also use get member with a view, in this case view base, to see the properties here. PS type names allows us to look at the pipe name, type names. And you can see that if you look at the bottom, you see object and sim instance. That's the original object. All the others are added by the type system adapter, allowing you to customize what will happen with a sim logical element. I, don't, I have no clue what a sim logical element is, but that, that is where, like all these places are places where you can say, everything that is such a thing should get this member or behave in this way. After the adapt adaptation, you see everything that you expect, the normal, what you consider to be the normal members, how we usually see them. And now I'm going to take a look at a small subset of these to demonstrate a thing. These are just the members uh, that begins, the adapted members that begins with B. Now I'm going to look at the same thing, but with a sim instance properties, the raw object, and get the members named B. And here you can see before and after the adapt adaptation, you can see the sim type, uh, U in 16 array, this one. This has been being transformed into the U in 16 array. The string array has become the PowerShell string array. So here, here, like the magic sauce has been involved that makes you not have to deal with this, this underlying object model with their types and, and, and you get into the beautiful common type. Following? When we look at the extended, we see yet another kind of hidden feature, something called the property set. Hands up who had seen property sets before? Bruce, you don't really count here. <laughs> but this, when we look at this as a, a property, we just see that it has a PS status. And PS status can be used just as any other property when we uh, format things. And when we use that, we will get all the properties that this property set referenced. And you can add your own property sets with the XML uh, type definition. I haven't, I haven't seen you being able to do that through update type data if you don't craft your own type data array in code. So. Add member. Add member is used to manipulate a single object instance as opposed to the type. Does that make, does it ring a bell when I say that there's a difference here? Hands up who, who everybody who thinks you're clear on the differences between, between changing the type and the object. Okay. If I change, uh, Say that I have a person, uh, and I say, add salary to that person. If I do it with add member, I will get higher salary you want. If I use up the type data and say, add salary, we all will get raised salaries. And not just us, but everybody else will also get it. So the differences, the differences between an individual and the rates. Okay? Add member is only for a single object. What you can add is aliases. Call this property something else. When you call it with something else, it will just be an alias. It will refer to another property. Node property is a piece of storage. Script property runs script blocks. Code property works as a script property, but uh, it's written in, in uh, .NET code instead. And, and it's a bit trickier to add. Uh, 
And the same is with script method, adds a method, code method, adds a method. It's just imp implemented either in a script block or in C sharp code, or F sharp, or GB, or G. I know what you're thinking. Enough talk, where's the code? Add member, let's say what, yeah, that's not really readable, is it? Sorry. Uh, we will start uh, with creating a simple custom object, okay? It has two values, and we will not now add a property square. It's implemented as a script block, as taking the property value and multiplying it by itself. And when we now, we also add a type name, and then we look at it. So we can see the type name is now my value type, I have my node property, but I also have a script pro property. Let's, sorry, let's go back quickly here. I pipe it to group, and you see that group looks like, it's hard to read, what is this thing? So I add a toString method to my type. ToString is what group object will use to show you the element members. And after that, you can see how I can control, instead of this value, Square is a system automation management blah, 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 script property. I can control the output of my object. If you want to do it in code, this is to add a code property. So I start with adding some C sharp code here with add type. It's actually just adding a method that takes a PS object as input. This is how you write a code property. A code get property should only take a PS object as input and return something. The setter should take a PS object and a parameter of the same type as the get code property returns. And then we can say, ask this type for the method named as hacker long and add it with add member as a code property. Okay? What this actually did was convert uh, a double in a way that programmers expect them to be converted. I was really, really surprised when I tried to convert a double to an integer, and it just keep rounding it up sometimes and down, down sometimes. As a programmer, we always expect that an integer is just the integer part of a float or, or a double. So this is how we can fix it. You see, this rounds it upwards instead of downwards. This is something that I, I recently found that I didn't know was possible, but you can actually create a custom object and then add a variable property to it. I had n never heard of this before. <laughs> Bruce. It's part of the as custom object on new module. If you wanted to be able to have a variable in the module, I suppose it's a property in the object. I had to create a new type of a property. That's what I said. That's what you can Ah, that's cool. Uh, but you can actually use this type accelerator, PS variable property, uh, 
And you see here how I'm, uh, this isn't exposed uh, via add member, but by using the PS object abstraction and getting the properties in there, I can add this variable. And the cool thing here is that if I change this, I also change the variable. It was five from the beginning, I changed the object's property, and it changed the variable. And it also, you see the validate range up here on the variable? When I try to set this, oh, couldn't do that. So again, update type data manipulates the global type table in the PowerShell execution context. It does not work on object instances. So this, what you change here, changes, changes for everybody. Okay? And one place that, that I find excellent usage for this is when I have objects that I don't uh, control, one of them has, for example, a string. In my example, uh, I had a property called description, and it contained references to GRI items. GRI is some, some sort of bug tracking system. Uh, and I wanted to reason about the GRAs that were referenced in the description. We will see how that can be solved. Type data is the data structure in the type table that keeps track of all the extensions we make to the system. This is the, the, like the soul of the extended type system. Property extensions, method extensions, display properties, member sets. Something we won't cover at all today, serialization when you do remoting. How should your objects from one computer be serialized and brought over to your computer? like what is being used, how deep that serialization uh, will go, is controlled by information in, in these types. Uh, we also have uh, conversions between types. Entry points for extending that system is here. And custom adapters. But I know what you're thinking. Where's the code? Oh, this is, uh, this was actually readable. <sighs> Can't we? <sighs> Did you go to Matthias Regex <laughs> session? You can actually make this <laughs> readable. So what we're going to look at today is just the members highlighted. And uh, as you see, when you, when you work with up to type, type data, you always uh, start with a type name. This is the thing we're going to change the type data for. Okay? Uh, you say what kind of member type you want to, is it, uh, oh, let's look at it's easier to create some data. This is just I create a bunch of PS custom objects, but you see that I start with assigning a type name. I call it issue tracking. And it looks like this. And now we update the type data for the type name is issue tracking. We add a script property with the name Jira. And the value is that I run a regular expression saying, get me all the JIRAs and return that as a string array. And when we now look at the objects, you can see that we have our JIRAs as first class citizen instead of being pieces of that description string. And all of a sudden, uh, this is awesome. This is like the secret source of PowerShell. Once you understand what you can do with type data, your world changes. It's so powerful, it's so amazingly powerful. I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, 
Now we're updating the display prop default display property set of this to get back to the original look that we had before. I added the property Jira. And when I try to group it, you see it's, I can just say group Jira instead of think of the regex you had to write to get to, to this without having the, this meta description. Group output, not helpful. So let's update the type data. Achieve the same thing that we did with add member, but we do it for all issue trackers. So now we have pretty output for every issue tracking instance that we create. And if we look at it, you can see we have the .NET object default methods that every .NET object have. But then we have the node properties that we created when we created the, the custom objects in the beginning. And then the toString and Jira property that we have added, we don't see the type name, but we could see it by typing $obis.ps type names. And if we look with get member, you see type name issue tracking. Okay, following. So here's the alternative way to achieve the same thing, but by writing a class. So quickly, I now have strong typing of the ID, owner, and description. I already have implemented the two-string method in the same way, but I have to do some coding dancing here to, to, to get into uh, the Jira property. So in the same way as previously, I've implemented a method that takes a single PS object and returns what I want to return. The implementation is exactly the same as in the script block. And then I had used to reflection to get a hold of that method, create some property data. This is the type data that, that uh, I said was like the essence of the, the member that the type table has to keep track of all this data. And I add a code property I don't have a setter, so I have a null as a setter. I add, add my code property to my type data and update type data with this. So this is not a pretty story. This could be a whole lot better if we had some form of computed properties. So I, this is something I think we should fix in classes. But it can be done. And given that you do the work, I can now rely on PowerShell's automatic type conversion. Re remember uh, me saying how he uses the type system to help us go from different things? So now we have one, one object, this custom object that we made. But the properties are the same. So as one of the things PowerShell does to convert objects is, look, well, can I match the properties? Yes, I can. So I can just convert these <coughs> issues and output them, and it looks the same. I can group, it looks good from the beginning. And if you see here, we only have, we not, have no node properties, we have no script method, we have one code property. But one difference here is that you can actually tell the type of the code property. Do you see that it says system string array? Jira. I like types. When you have types, PowerShell can help you more. So I encourage you to try to type things as much as you can. It will make your world easier. So, type conversions. This is what makes PowerShell easy to use because they do a lot of work for you. So when you try to assign, for example, our objects, you remember the dollar obvious that I had with my issues. My issues, <laughs> That guy has lots of issues. Uh, uh, when we try to, to assign them to the, the class-based version, first of all, PowerShell tried to look, is there a direct assignment? Is these types that I know of, like I can make a, an int to a long, I know that. So that's direct 
No, it's, if it's the same type, you know, just to direct. Or is it, if it's, it, is it a type that I know, that PowerShell knows about how to do a direct conversion, do it. Then we look, is there a parse method on the target type? If there is, try to parse it. Is there a static create method on the target? Well, use it. Is there a constructor that takes the argument type of the source object? Use it. On and on and on. One of the later here, the, the PS object property conversion, that was the last uh, thing, that, that was uh, what got invoked when we converted our obvious to our issues. And finally, you can register a type converter conversion. That you say, I won't want to actually hook this and, and have a say in how this is done. There is an asterisk there. And that's because I got this list from Lee Holmes' blog. And then I wrote my custom type converter and said, that, well, this works, but it shouldn't. And I have no idea why. <laughs> have you ever been there? It happens to me a lot. <laughs> but but uh, the thing is, since PowerShell is open source, I can attach a debugger. And uh, with very, very tiny uh, print here, it's not meant for you to see, but if you go to languageprimitives.cs and line 4216, there is a method figure conversion. And if you put a breakpoint there and try to do th this thing that shouldn't work for you, you, you can see that before they return, they, I, I actually created a, a converter that took a string and tried to convert from a string. And I thought by reading this that, well then, the constructor conversion should have been used. It wasn't. It actually used my registered type converter. So as, what they do is, as a final step is wrap uh, the converter they, that they have found in something that checks to see, well, use this if you don't find a registered custom converter. I had, I never, I had never figured that out if uh, they hadn't made the source code available. So I'm so happy. Finally, we're going to look at a type adapter, a custom type adapter. Uh, the full adapter API is not uh, available for us, but uh, yet again, like a safe subset where you can create a type adapter that only adapts properties is available. And uh, there is this PS property adapter that we can inherit from, uh, and that is used in one of the, the built-in third-party adapter, it's called, uh, as a part of their implementation. And it's actually quite easy. Uh, you inherit from your custom property adapter. Uh, you register this uh, adapter with the update type data. And profit. But I know what you're thinking. But, yeah. So first, let's just see. I've written some C-sharp code. It's a DLL called a build project adapter. Now I use a type accelerator. Uh, do you know what a type accelerator is? Pa PowerShell has uh, a class uh, um, that's called type accelerators, where you can register a shorthand. So you type some um, pithy and it expands to something longer internally. So regex is actually just uh, it's a moniker for system.text.regularexpressions.regex, but that's hard to type. So uh, I added. Uh, that's actually not exposed, but I, I got ugly and uh, reflected and added my own. So I could say, when somebody use proj, that will, will actually expand to, to my uh, adapted uh, object. And when I do this, I convert the string, and I get an object with a full evaluated set of how MS build looks at a C++ project file. So the project file is just XML. And if I had used uh, the XML adapter, you know, you cast to XML and you can dot into the properties. Have you done that? Yeah. 
then I would have gotten the static view. But the project files in, in MS Build, they reference other files in a very, very deep chain of, of things. And this lets me, low at, lets me look at the, at the evaluated view of this, which is really, really nice for somebody who occasionally works with the build system and tries to figure out why things doesn't uh, work as I, I thought they would. Story of my life. Quick look at, and this is also actually interesting. Have you seen, did you know that there was a I module assembly initialization? Yes, I hope so. Is it better? If you provide a class that inherits from this, it's on import method will be called when you import this module. So this gives me a way to, to like hook things up. You see, I add my type accelerator, I create type data, I say I want to add a type adapter and a type converter. And this is how you, from C Sharp, like invoking PowerShell is a lot harder from C Sharp than it is when you're in PowerShell. So I say I want to give me a PowerShell and call update type data with the type data parameter and then I pass uh, the values that I actually want to, to add to this. And this is just, I, I inherit from the property adapter. Uh, when that gets queried from like, what properties should I display? I give it a list, hey, give it this. And when they, they later ask me to, like, I want to get this property now. The, the difference is between what properties do you have available and please give me this specific one. Okay. I return... Uh, oh, this is the last piece, giving me the property value. Then I, I do some c sharp stuff to, to actually get the, the evaluated values of the object model. That's completely uninteresting uh, how that's implemented. It's, uh, this is just a very, very quick overview of what mechanisms are available. And I can also, in this case, specify when PowerShell asks me this property, what type does it have? You know when you type get member, it shows you the names and the types. So, so this is where PowerShell gets this from, from my adapter. The converter, this is what, what made me so, so uh, confused. Uh, it actually has a couple of methods where it first asks, hey, can you convert from this type to this type? Or from, from this value to this type? And I can either say, yeah, I think I can do that. And in my case, I said yes. Well, if the, if the destination type that you want to create is a project, and the source value is a string, and that string ends with prior, and there is, exists such a file, then say, yes, I can. And to actually do the conversion, I set up some MS build properties, and I just create uh, the MS build project that needs uh, all the setup before. But, but by doing all this in one place, Instead of doing this every time I wanted this uh, project file view, I can now just simply say, convert this to a proj. And PowerShell does it for me. And it feels really natural as a first class uh, citizen uh, to use. So if I look here, for example, at project items, it lists me. And yet again, we see this lack of a two string, right? So let's fix this by what we have learned. Let's add default property set, a default display property, and a toString method. And when we look at the same thing again, I actually get data that makes sense in my domain. Do you see how you can use the type system to like mold your experiences to suit yourself? Instead of just like live with what PowerShell out of the, the box gives you. They have provided all the 
all the secret pieces. You may need to learn about them, but when, once you do it, it, it <laughs> it's, I, just, oh, I just love it. These are just different ways of, of looking at... Uh, but it's now so easy for me to go like, okay, what source files uh, was in this project? They were called seal compile for, for the C++ compiler. Uh, I didn't have to parse anything. I didn't have to guess. I didn't like, it's, it's just, I get the same view as the build system will give me. That's, uh, yeah, it's like magic. So, Summary, PS object is the root of the type system abstractor, like the dispatcher, where everything is tied together. Adaptive type system provides a projection from the underlying differences, the ugliness of the, the real world, into the beautiful world of the divine. And the extended type system gives us the glue that we need to glue things together. Okay? And all available to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Questions? I, I have, but I haven't noticed. So in the Windows event log, we adapted it so that it says you know, the, the event type, the dot net type, but then it tells you the log and the entry ID. Ooh. And specifically, so that community can register parsers for individual events. This is so great. <laughs> I did, uh, really, literally, a month ago, I wrote a custom parser for the IAS uh, event log. Uh, let's revisit. This, this is what's so great about conferences like this. You, you, you get so much like influences and inputs and things you want to go back and try. And, but the, oh, sorry, questions? <laughs> <laughs> In this case, I, I really cheated, and I didn't provide any setters, but I could create with a lot more, lot more work. This was like I did the easy things. But if I uh, put more thought in the model of the projection, I can trap writes back when you say update this property and make sure uh, like, that I update the underlying model. Th that can be tricky, and, and in this case, I'd never dare to do that because I, I would wreak havoc with everything. Uh, but it's uh, definitely like the, the, the sim stuff. Uh, like it lets you call and call properties and uh, or call methods and change and manipulate the, the underlying model. The, as I said, this property adapter it allows us to adapt properties, not methods. So, so I haven't investigated the, the limitations here, but that's something I think uh, the team members, Dongguan and Bruce, Jeffrey, can help you with. I actually, very quickly, uh, went past that. If you later on download the, the demos, so f for there's the, the PS um, default display property set. The, it's not PS, default display property set. If you update the type data with that, you can say what properties should be used as a default set. Uh, your other options, as you said, is the format files, but God, they are verbose. Yeah. 
XML was very popular when this was uh, invented. It's easy to like to make fun of it in hindsight, but uh, Bruce. Yes. Uh, I have a formatting talk uh, on Thursday. I will also touch a bit on a possible future. I know Jason Shirk is working on a S'more, which is a way of expressing uh, formatting much more succinctly using uh, classes and attributes on classes. Uh, yeah, but uh, this is a part of the story that I think we can do better on. The, the formatting is... Uh, it's powerful, and, and uh, given what we had, it's excellent, but, but we, given what we've learned, we can do better now. Both in expressiveness and in uh, performance. If no more questions, I thank you for coming, and for your patience, and for living with my issues. Uh, <laughs>